but I fully expected NAS, the stock market to go to 3,000, the S&P 500, and Bitcoin and a lot of cryptos to still have more problems, but to come out ahead with Hello everyone, today our guest is popular Bloomberg trader and expert Mike McGlone, who in this video talks about the current macro outlook, Fed's rate hikes forecast, recession scenarios, and shares his expert opinion about Bitcoin and crypto price predictions. Bitcoin BTC $24,146 can hit $10 million per coin or more as it eats 25% of the global wealth, new analysis has concluded. In a blog post released on February 16, fund manager and Bitcoin expert advisor Jesse Myers revealed his own outrageous BTC price target. Bitcoin may struggle with brutal volatility, but hodlers and critics alike should be in no doubt about its long-term price trajectory, Myers says. Analyzing Bitcoin's value proposition, he argues that Bitcoin's ability to appreciate over time means that it is all but destined to suck in value from other asset classes. Among other reasons, this is because an asset with such appreciation characteristics and increasing scarcity allows it to fulfill the role of digital gold. Bitcoin has an unthinkable property. It gets more valuable over time. Gold is good at storing purchasing power, but Bitcoin grows purchasing power, the blog post reads. Value stored in Bitcoin becomes worth more over time because of Bitcoin's design of increasing scarcity. You just have to outlast the admittedly brutal volatility along the way. I disagree that Powell didn't fight back, but I agree that the market thinks that Powell didn't fight back. Yeah, and right. I look at the man said we were going to raise rates. I look at all my indicators that rates are going higher. And the number one thing I watch and always watch is Fed fund futures one year from now. They show... Before he spoke, they showed price, you know, rates a year from now were going to be a bit lower. Now they show them higher, up around 5%. So that's fighting back. I mean, the market heard what I want to hear, but it's the wrong time to hear. That's why I think this is one of the classic best short covering bear markets we're going to see in our lifetimes. And I look at it akin to what happened in 2930. Market dropped 50% in 29, rallied 50% in 1930. We don't have to talk about the rest of that. The Fed's tightening into a recession environment. Yes, some data is strong, but if you look at what came out last week, um, retail sales, if you take retail sales, annualize, divide PPI and CPI, it's negative, it's deficit, and it's very much recessionary. So to me, market can hear what it wants. But the cool thing that's been happening is compared to last year when Bitcoin was leading the way down, Bitcoin's been leading the way up this year. Again, Friday, and that was an awesome trade. Bitcoin was down about 3 4% and end up unchanged. The stock market's been falling. So I don't know how long that's going to last. But for now, I'll end with this. A typical recession, the U.S. stock market peaked the trial, drops 50%. We're so far from that. We're early days. We, so we just talked about the three largest economies in the world. <clears throat> China and uh, Japan completely export-focused um, and massive stimulation. And one of the, the most significant import um, demand pull economy in the planet is um, doing the opposite. And clearly um, stated by the senior left, senior people controlling this, i.e. Jerome Powell in terms of pain, focusing on a recession. So that's a crash that's coming and it's showing up in all my indicators. Now, first, we don't need to, we can just talk about the U.S. unleaded gas demand, housing. They are collapsing at a higher velocity than 2006, seven and eight. Let's look at some macro in terms of China. The key thing is should show up in copper. On a 12-month basis, copper is down 8%. I love how people point to the first of the year. And all the people on this line who know what trading's about is this is when you this is when you you know you cover those positions from last year, put on the hopium from this year. This is a time of year you got to be careful with the trade. It's the trend that matters. So the trend in copper is down. The trend in aluminum is down 25%. The trend in and, and crude oil, China's the largest incremental demand pull for crude oil on the planet, is down, down 15% on a 12-month basis. Um, and let's look at U.S. natural gas. It's the lowest place since 1990. So what I'm describing to you is I think this massive global economic reset that's coming, and it's deflationary. Natural gas, the number one measure of heat and electricity in this country, is at the same price as 1990. So that's, I know I've pointed, pointed that before, but everything's following that. Lumber's done that. And the key thing is what stops this. Maybe some stimulation from the export driven com countries who are completely dependent on, and they've completely, I'll end with this, 
with this, this third world war is really accelerating. Mr. Z made one of the biggest mistakes in the world with unlimited friendship with Russia before the war. Now, Europe has no desire to do any business with China. The U.S. is divesting at the most significant pace ever. And then we have this autocratic regime accelerating. So I look at this as what drove this, you know, this commodity boom from, you know, 2000 is completely reversed. And unless you expect per capita GDP in India to double or triple in the next two decades, we're heading towards that deflationary recession. And the two economies are dependent on exports are hoping that U.S. will not go into recession. It's almost a guarantee. It's based on things like the curve. And I'll end with this. People, most people alive in this country have not experienced inflation. And unlike unemployment, it hurts everyone. So to me, that's just getting started and the Fed's still tightening. At some point, going over to re leading this to, this is that recession's coming, und undoubtedly, but leading over to what you said about Bitcoin is, yes, I think at some point Bitcoin's gonna trade more like gold than US Treasury long bonds. But if the stock market does what I think it's gonna do, S&P 500 going to 3,000, not a big deal in a normal recession. Um, that's normal. Um, Bitcoin's going to have a problem. Crypto's going to have a problem. But I think they're going to come out ahead more gold than Bitcoin. The problem is it's still, um, they still have a higher correlation to the risk asset of the stock market. If you look at Bitcoin over 52 weeks, 50 months, 50 weeks, 50 days, it still moves more at the stock market. So I think it's leading. But that to me is the macro. And this housing situation in Japan, according to our, our Chinese analysts, who in Hong Kong have to be very careful, is just early days. So it's global. It's fully expected. The thing is, it's happening in the data. So I'll, I'll end with this. This is one thing that I enjoy with some of my younger colleagues. We have the experience of having run money and lost money. And when I was calling for crude oil to drop to $40 a barrel when I was at 130, yeah, I was looking like an idiot. That was about a year ago. But my younger colleagues point out supply and demand. And I'm like, that's just doesn't, don't look at that because I can tell you what's going to happen to supply and demand based on price. And it always works that way. It's just that elasticity. And the thing is that demand elasticity is greater than ever. And the supply elasticity is higher than ever. Nature of leaders in history, they always get to pick the time and cycle. Like people point to Volcker. He just came in at the right person at the right time. But Powell just got the absolute wrong time. Number one, remember, this is a guy who pushed back on Trump. So I completely respect him for that. He really established, that's part of the reason the dollar and the U.S. kind of is tilting towards the world's tilting away from the um, aggressive nations and towards the U.S. Like, okay, you guys kind of, your system is autocratic, but what Pollock did, he's stuck in the wrong time. He got suckered into the um, transitory phase. And I fully think he is going to find out it is transitory, but there's a year lag. So we have the big pump in inflation, biggest ever, on the back of a year on the back of the biggest pump in money supply ever. Now we're hitting towards that deflationary period and he's tightened. So he's going to be looked back on, in my view, as just being the, making some of the wrong decisions. And the stock market is part of the problem too. But that's why I see this is, there's no end for this right now. Like I keep saying, I've been saying for a year now, what stops this trajectory of risk assets going down? Other than these little bounces that just inspire the Fed to tighten more and people think liquidity is actually loosening. It's not loosening. It's stock market going up and testing. It's just bear markets have to do that. I'll end with this. Bear markets have to take money from everybody and make it difficult. And if they're not, they're not bear markets. It just seems like we're, we're very, very early on this cycle if people believe somehow that we, we are back in a bull market because we usually have the end of the bear market after the pivot, not at the pivot. That's where you put your trader hat on. You say, that's my opportunity. And that's what most of the hedge funds who are not talking to us, I get to speak to once in a while, are doing. And they all know that, okay, we fight. The, once you see the death cross on CNBC, then you do the opposite. You see it on Bloomberg. You do the, it's just that, come on, we've all done this. You just, you wait for it to hit the popular press. And here's the narrative I'll give you. I'll end you with this. This bear market's going to end when the demand or the estimate revisions, which are still towards people saying that silly thing called soft landing. I, I've been caught doing it, even though the Fed hasn't done tightening yet. You're not supposed to talk about soft landing until a good lag after the last tightening. And just been through, through those markets. But I think what's going to happen is right now, markets are doing what human nature does. You underestimate the extent of the decline. Remember this time last year, everybody, no one called for a 20% correction in the stock market. It didn't call for the war either. Now they're at the stage of calling for a soft lane. We got to get to the point where people give up, say, no, it's going to be a bad recession for a long time. That's going to take a while. And that's when you start saying, okay, then it's time to buy. And I think we're so early. Yeah, I, I have to echo that. There's times in life to focus on the history and be defensive. And I, you know, I don't make advice. I'm not allowed to do that, but you know, good old government to your notes. <laughs> like, thank you very much. Let the dust settle. If you want someone to blame for this, just to being a great dip to buy. I'm happy to stand up with my colleagues here. So I look at it as 
Um, I'm actually publishing something tomorrow. This trend versus trade. The trend is everything's going downward and people are just trying to say, but the trade is, it might be, I look at this, what I used to do with my clients. I mean, I would structure a like a put strategy in Bitcoin around 25,000. Like Dave said, it's so bullish if it stays here, but I fully expect that the stock market to go to 3,000, S&P 500. And Bitcoin and a lot of cryptos that still have more problems, but to come out ahead with gold and uh, long bonds. Absurd or not, Myers is far from alone in eyeing sky-high Bitcoin price valuations coming true in the coming decades. Some are even calling for the $1 million mark to hit before the end of this one. Avarike Invest, for example, continued to stick by that very prediction throughout the 2022 bear market declines. In its Big Ideas 2023, Outlook released at the end of January, the investment giant described long-term opportunity as strengthening. The firm's bear case for 2030, it revealed, still puts BTCUSD at $258,000 by the end of the decade. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.